Um, hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lukáš and uh, I would like to present a short talk on uh, how we test a graphical user interface with OpenQA in Fedora. But uh, this talk is not going to be an informative talk only. It should be, a, it should be an evangelizing talk. And uh, maybe it could inspire you to start using OpenQA if uh, sometimes you might look uh, for something that uh, can help you testing stuff uh, in GUI. OpenQA is an automated test tool. Uh, it's mainly developed by SUSE, but we also use it in Fedora, and my colleague Adam Williamson uh, helps developing it too. And uh, OpenQA is fully integrated into Fedora. It's packaged for Fedora, so if you run Fedora, uh, you can just install it in 15 minutes using the RPM packages. Uh, however, this talk is not going to be about installing OpenQA or setting it up. Uh, I talked about it uh, last year on Fedora Hatch, and I'll probably talk about it uh, again someday in the future, doing a workshop, but this is just aimed on uh, graphical user interface testing. Uh, OpenQA is good because uh, it allows you to test various operating systems. So when I talk about Fedora, you could replace Fedora by anything. It could be RHEL, it could be OpenSUSE, it could be Windows. It's up to you what you put inside the virtual machine. Because OpenQA runs a virtual machine and performs the tests on the content of that virtual machine. Good thing also is that you don't have to install anything into the tested operating system. So you can just take the basic operating system, you don't need to add anything to it, you run it in a virtual machine and you can work uh, testing it. So it basically creates and runs a virtual machine. Uh, this can be based on an ISO file or a QCOW2 file and you can perform various actions inside that virtual machine and evaluate the outcome. Uh, the architecture is that uh, there is an OpenQA web application with a database that's a sort of a scheduler. Uh, you communicate with it using the browser or a REST API, and then it has a worker that performs all the, all the jobs that it downloads from OS AutoInst. Uh, it has the tests. It runs VNC and it uses Quemu to operate the virtual machine. Uh, the controller does the visualization, job handling, live viewing results, and it stores the results in the database, and the worker uh, tests, runs the tests and uh, checks the needles and does uh, all the other things uh, that are needed to work with the virtual machines. Uh, you can have the, the worker and controller can be on one computer, so you can run it on a laptop, for example, but it also can be split and you can run a scheduler or the controller. Uh, on one computer, on one machine, and you can run workers on other machines, so you can have a bunch of workers and uh, do a multiple tests uh, at the same time. Of course, you can do it in, on one machine too, if you have enough, enough RAM. The test itself is a Perl script, although it should be possible to write those tests in Python too. I have never tried, uh, because the test language, the test Perl is pretty easy, so it's just the basic Perl commands and, uh, and some other commands from the OpenQA. And uh, the test defines what you do inside of that virtual machine. So it mainly defines uh, mouse and keyboard actions, 
and it checks and evaluates the needles. We are going to talk about the needles a little bit later, so you will know what that is. And uh, it evaluates uh, the expected, what, what, you, what you say you expect in the test script, so then you can compare it to what you get in the virtual machine. And of course, the test or the job can end with various statuses, such, such as passed, failed, soft failed, cancelled, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, the tests are Perl modules, and uh, they are placed in the test directory. Uh, that's probably not that important, but if you, if you see the uh, OpenQA instance, so there is a tests directory with the test scripts, and there is also a lib directory uh, where are the libraries uh, with commands that you can use. And uh, the routines we are going to talk about now are documented uh, in the test API documentation, which is open.qa API test API. So you can check it there, because I am not going to talk about it on a deep level. I will just show you what you can do and what uh, routines you can use to, to test the graphical user interface, actually. Uh, each test uh, has a header where you define what libraries or what files, what packages it will use. Uh, you probably know, if you know Perl, so you know the use strict and uh, maybe use warnings. Uh, these are useful things to do because uh, if you omit it, then uh, Perl will not tell you about uh, your own mistakes. So. Uh, troubleshooting uh, a test script is rather, rather complicated then. And uh, we say that uh, we use the install test and we use the test API library and the utils library in this header. Uh, in Fedora, these are mostly, the header is mostly standardized and uh, this is I would say, a typical header for the majority of our uh, graphical user interface tests. Uh, then uh, it should have a subroutine called run, where all commands must go. Uh, you can also use other subroutines in the test scripts, but uh, then these are only visible in the scope of that module and not outside of it. So you can prepare some routines of your own. You can use it then in the run subroutine, but outside of the module only, only the subroutine run will be visible. And uh, then it ends with the test flags. The test flags specify what to do when your test finishes, and uh, by default all are off, so you can switch it on like this. For example, always rollback means that uh, after the test finishes, it will return back to a saved status, because you can save the virtual machine on some point, then you can perform various activities, and after these activities are finished, you come back to the original state, which is great, which is a great thing to do when you, don't, you want to start from the same point all the time. For example, uh, if you have a graphical application and uh, you start using your mouse and clicking on widgets, so you are moving the state of that application and then, uh, for example, you could start the next test, you could start at a certain point. For example, you open the help window in one test because you want to test that the help window can be opened. So you open it and then you do another test that uses another widget but the help window is still opened. So you can design it like, yeah, 
you can do it like by design. I want to continue when the, when the help window is opened. But then sometimes the test fails and the help window will not be opened. And it breaks the consecutive tests also. So therefore it's, it's good to start from a certain point and you can save it and then you can always roll back to it. Uh, other possible flags are fatal, which means that if the test fails, then everything fails. Or a milestone, which means that now after the test, it's the point where you want to save the status of the virtual machine. And uh, no rollback if you don't want rollback. Or ignore failure if failures should be ignored. Uh, and then each Perl module must return a true return value. So right at the end, you have to place uh, one. Uh, this was a, when I started with OpenQA, I didn't know that. And I uh, often would omit the one. And then uh, I, I was getting con you know, errors all the time and I couldn't run it and I didn't know why. And then I realized there must be the one. Okay, so now you want to test a graphical user interface, which basically is you want to see something, you want to see some widgets, and you want to interact with those widgets using your mouse or using your keyboard. So OpenQA lets you do the following actions for uh, the mouse control. You can set the mouse to a position, mouse set. This is good if you know to which position you want to set the mouse. Uh, normally, you would define the resolution of the screen in OpenQA, uh, the resolution of the virtual machine. And you maybe know that the position of the widget is on 500, 600. So you could move the mouse to that position directly. Most of the time, this is not the case, and I will show you how to fix it. Uh, you can hide the mouse cursor, move it out of the, of the screen, because sometimes you don't want the, that cursor to affect the process of the, uh, of the test. You can click on the mouse. You can double-click on the mouse. You can triple-click on the mouse. Each of those commands, uh, you can select the button to click, if it's the left, the middle, or the right button. How long it should be clicked, but I don't want to go that deep uh, right now. And you could also uh, do a mouse drag, which means you start on some point, you hold the mouse button, and you drag to another position. Uh, mouse scrolls are currently not supported. Uh, I visited the OpenSUSE booth this morning, and uh, there were uh, some nice guys doing OpenQA also, and I had a nice chat with them. And uh, I asked about a problem that I, I have uh, with uh, a certain needle type, and then uh, uh, Defolos told me, and yes, but this is not uh, such a big problem, but if somebody wanted to create a patch, it would be mouse scroll. So they also want mouse scrolls. We want mouse scrolls, but nobody has implemented it yet. And uh, there is a workaround we are using in Fedora tests, and it's a keyboard workaround. So uh, key events that you can use is you can send a key, which basically means press a key or press a combination of keys. Press and hold a key is a good good point when, or good stuff when you want to interact with the mouse. So you can press and hold the key and press the mouse button and the release, both of them. Uh, that might be good for some uh, sophisticated applications. Uh, release a key, of course, is when you're pressing and holding it. So releasing a key releases the key. Send key until needle match basically is press the key repetitively until you find what you expect, which I am using when I need to scroll the mouse. So I am sending like a down arrow or a tab or something, and then the GUI scrolls. 
you can type a string. In Fedora, uh, we have wrappers. Type safely and type very safely because you can specify in type string, you can specify how fast it should type uh, and so on. And uh, because we don't want to repeat it all the time, so type very safely, types really slowly. Because when you just type a string, sometimes we were getting errors like it typed so quickly that it missed a letter, for example. Or it pressed the letter so quickly that it produced three consecutive letters, like instead of password, it produced P-A-A-A-S-W-O-O-R-D-D-D-D-D, so this is not what you want. So therefore, we are typing very slowly with the type very safely command. Uh, type password is similar, but it doesn't get logged in the log files, so that nobody should know about it. And enter a command is basically, again, type a string, but this time uh, it adds a enter press at the end of the command. So you can have this one to run commands. And now we talk about needles that are a crucial part of uh, the GUI testing because how the test machine should know about what you want to see. And it's because you can compare a pre-created image with the content of the virtual machine. So you have a screenshot with an area defined that you expect to be found, and then OpenQA compare it, compares it with uh, the content of, uh, of the virtual machine, and if you get a match, it's good. If you don't, it's, it's not that good unless you want it. So you have various, like, assert screen means that uh, you want to check that something is there. Maybe a widget is present or an icon is visible on the screen. Check screen is similar, but it doesn't fail if, uh, if nothing is found, and instead it gives, you, it gives you an undefined value, so you can use some kind of diversions in your code, like if you find this, do that. If you don't, do something else. Assert screen and click is that if it's found, it clicks on it. Assert screen and de-click is if it's found, then just make a double click. Uh, then, for example, what we also use is click on last match. For example, if you have a check screen, maybe, so then it finds a match and you don't have to write another assert. So you just use click on last match and it will pick up that last match and click on it. So you can say if check screen something, click on last match. And if not, do something else. And uh, sometimes also it's very important to wait until a screen changes or to wait until the screen stays still. Because sometimes uh, OpenQA is pretty fast. It's, it's much faster than a user is. So we had problems with KDE, for example, because KDE uh, used sort of uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, yeah, it, it, the, the word slipped my mind. Uh, OK, uh, sort of uh, animations. Yes, that's the word. And those animations took some time, but OpenQA was so fast that it clicked somewhere even before the animation was ended and the test failed. So you say, wait until the screen stays still, and then it can do animations as it will, and uh, the test waits for it and then finds uh, the needle it should. Uh, there are some more. You can uh, record a soft failure. You can record information, and you can save a screenshot. However, uh, it didn't work for me to save a screenshot. I don't know why. I must figure it out, but it should be there. Uh, you could also provide variables, either uh, in the test setting or when you start those tests, you can uh, say, uh, you can define a variable and then you can 
I use the variable by get variable or set variable or check variable. So for example, you can say that uh, in the test settings that uh, you can say that the tag, for example, is GNOME. And then you can have one test script that could operate on GNOME and KDE. And it, it knows that the variable is set to GNOME and it will only do the GNOME part on that one particular run. And if you replace the variable when you start the script, then it will behave the opposite way and it will also only run the uh, KDE parts. So uh, what is the needle, how it looks like? So basically this is a screen uh, with a graphical application and uh, this is the calculator, the GNOME calculator. And uh, I took the screenshot from a real test, real life test. So uh, this is what we expect a user might see. But because it's so complicated when we compare the entire screen, so that it, it's, there are so many problems, maybe like these little tiny dots, you know, we don't want to compare the entire screenshot, but we want to just compare if there is the button with the number one. So from this screenshot, we define an area that the OpenQA should try to find, which is the button one. And uh, now it only looks for this particular part. Theoretically, this particular part could be found on any position of the screenshot. So it doesn't have to be just here. And if, for example, the graphical application is moved to the right part of the screen, it will still match. When we uh, think about the needles, so it consists of two files. There is the PNG screenshot and a JSON description file. A needle must have at least one area. If it should be a clickable needle, then it should just have one area. And the click point lies in the middle of that area. The, the needle also needs a tag because uh, it looks for them according to the tag. And uh, you can have more needles with the same tag. Uh, the bigger the area, the more risk of mismatch, and you can also set the needle fuzziness that can be adjusted from 0 to 100, where with 0, it would be probably everything is a match, and with 100% is like a, a totally exact match is a match. So by default, it's set to 96, and we sometimes go to 90. Uh, this is the JSON file. It looks like this. That's the tag to find the, the needle. And uh, you know that there is the XPOS, IPOS. At, it's the coordinates where to start. Then width and height are the width and height of the area. And uh, the type is match. Uh, that means it, can it must find a graphical match. And the match fuzziness is 90. Uh, okay, need for needles. Uh, yeah, this is basically that uh, sometimes you need to make more needles to cover for one tag because uh, fonts differ, colors might differ, and uh, stuff might differ. So, for example, for uh, if you want to check the buttons on that calculator, you would need 24 needles, uh, at least. The example, uh, the, the, the test example, how you would click on those buttons and you would solve the three times bracket three plus two bracket closed equals sequence, uh, you, could you could solve with these commands. So it's basically assert and click, assert and click, assert and click a certain click, and then compare the result, and that's it. And then delete it with escape, for example. And uh, you see that uh, this would require eight needles. 
to do just this. So uh, we have some more time, so I would like to show you the real test. This is a real calculator test uh, that does various clicking and uh, tries to do various, uh, various uh, you know, examples or equations. It also shows the help. It also shows the about window. Uh, if you take a look on the code, it's slightly more complicated, but because uh, we were trying to use a subroutine that does the calculation so that we don't have to repeat all the needles all the time. And uh, the last thing I would like to show you is the video. I hope I can, can uh, how can I make it slow? Speed, yes. So half the speed. And so now it logs into the workstation. It starts the graphical application called calculator. And it uh, shows the about. Now it clicks and solves the equations. So this is so designed that to solve those equations, it must click on all of the buttons. So we know that all of the buttons work, and uh, we also know that the help worked. So this is a very short uh, graphical test of GNOME calculator and uh, this is everything I wanted to show you today. It's so easy, you can start right away. I measured it, the installation and setting up the OpenQA takes 15 minutes. When you know when. Okay. <laughs> 30 minutes when you don't know. Okay, do you have questions? Uh, the, the good thing is, uh, can I repeat the question? How uh, do we test GNOME with Wayland or KDE with Wayland? Uh, we, the good point about OpenQA is that it doesn't care about Wayland at all. Uh, so it all, only compares the, the screens that the virtual machine is giving. So if it runs Wayland or Zork, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter. But I saw BNC and that's similar. Yeah, using BNC is BNC is only screen. It's a bad one. Not BNC share test on the Yeah. So uh, you can test Wayland just fine. You test Windows. Yeah. Pretty. Ev you can test pretty much everything. What can be run in a virtual machine? Uh, pardon? You can't map scroll, right? Yeah, you can't, you literally use the scroll wheel on a map, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you cannot do it I don't, because uh, it's not implemented. Okay. So there is no way how you could, uh, how you could tell the, the OpenQA now scroll the button. Yeah, when I, uh, when I talked uh, with the OpenSUSE guys, they told me that probably uh, there is a routine which 
communicates to VNC and, sell, and sends scrolls, but... Uh, so, so all your... Uh, all it's not the same possible to do, it just hasn't been done. So testing, testing the ISO, which we were talking about here, is like the API you can use to test it, and it's just knows it's implemented mouse scroll, knows it's got a window between setting the correct VNC events and implementing mouse scroll. So it could be done, just nobody got around to yeah. it. So you can't use it right now, but maybe we find some time and way how to do it and... Uh, yeah. So on all the communication with the cat lane about VNC, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. But it's also, it's also in the serial console. So when you're doing running a script and asserting whether it passes or fails, it does that via the serial console. It redirects the output of the command over the serial console and then reads that and gets okay. the kernel code out of it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, if you want to, uh, you can contact me anytime and uh, I could help you and show you how to do it. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, we have a repo uh, where we store the, uh, the tests. This OS Auto in this Fedora. It's on Pegir. And uh, basically, you see that uh, there are the tests here. So uh, in this, we have applications. And each graphical application has a dedicated directory where you put all the tests uh, you want to run. Uh, I think that it's useful to split the entire application into various tiny steps and start from the beginning again, always roll back, always roll back, because then you know these tests passed, this test has failed, so let's just uh, investigate more this one. If this is just one entire script and something fails in the beginning, then the rest doesn't get tested, never. Yes. Of course, no problem with that. Yes, but because we don't want to... Okay, uh, do we have coordinates only to find the place to click, right? Uh, yes and no. Basically, uh, the, the engine operates on coordinates, but uh, I want... Yeah, I would like to show this once more. Uh, so I could expect that the widget number one would be on maybe 800, 200 or something, which may be or may be not the case. So therefore, there is the needle system that you say that you want to look for this particular area, so a little bit gray with one on it, and OpenQA compares it with what it has in the virtual machine, and it will calculate the coordinates automatically, and it will click in the middle of that area. So it does, uh, it calculates the coordinates for you. But if you want to specifically say it needs to be coordinate X and coordinate Y, 
then you use the mouse set and it moves the mouse to the exact coordinates. Okay, enough. Uh, yeah, time's up. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a great DEF CONF. <laughs>